To the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct. Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent, destroyer, the glorious conqueror, to subdue from the Shakti clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. Only in the supreme among humans, you were born on this earth. You faced out seven strides and said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise then, I prostrate. The pure bodies, form supreme and pure, wisdom motion like a golden mountain. Name that blazes in the three worlds, winner of the past, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like a spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. You are immaculate, three worlds are not. Incomparably wise one, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the founder having all understanding, the field of merit with quality like a vast ocean. To you, you, the one God, the, the purity which makes one free from attachment, 
the virtue which frees one from the lower realms, the one path, the sublime pure reality, to that dharma which pacifies thy prostrate. For those who are liberated and who also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations, who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you, the sublime community intending virtue by prostrate. Do not commit any non virtuous actions, perform only perfect virtuous actions. So do your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha a star, a mirage, a flame of a lamp. An illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud, see conditioned things as such. Through these merits, may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the full of faults, and be delivered from samsara. Thank you. that examines all phenomena called profound illumination. And at the same time, the noble Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, was engaged in the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, analyzing the five aggregates by nature empty. 
Then, through the inspiration of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra spoke to the noble Akutiteshwara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, How should those of good family learn who wish to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond? Thus he spoke, and the noble Akutiteshwara, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, replied to the Venerable Shariputra, saying, O Shariputra, whatever son of the which is to follow the profound practice of the wisdom gone beyond, to look at it like this, analyzing the five aggregates by nature empty. Form is empty, emptiness is form, emptiness is no other than form, form is no other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, recognition, kind of formations, and consciousness are all empty. Therefore, Shariputra, all the phenomena are their characteristics. They are unborn and unceasing. They are neither impure nor free from impurity. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no karmic formations, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no, no, no tongue, no body, no mind. There are no spheres of the eyes up to no spheres of the mind. There are none of these, all the way up to the sphere of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance, nor is there destruction of ignorance. There are none of these, all the way up to, there is no old age and death, nor is there destruction of old age and death. Thus there is no suffering, no cause of suffering, no cessation of suffering, and no path. There is no wisdom, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, all bodhisattvas hold to the wisdom gone beyond, and because there is no obscurity of mind, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond falsity, they reach beyond the bounds of sorrow. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times are relying on the wisdom gone beyond, fully and clearly awakened to unsurpass most perfect and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the wisdom gone beyond, the mantra of great insight, the unequaled and unsurpassed mantra, the mantra that calms all suffering should be known as the truth, for there is no deception. The mantra of the wisdom gone beyond is proclaimed. This is how Bodhisattva Mahasattva should learn the profound wisdom gone beyond. Then the Blessed One arose from that concentration and praised the noble of Akiteshwara, Bodhisattva Mahasattva, saying, Very good, very good, son of the family. But it's exactly like that. The profound wisdom gone beyond should be practiced exactly as you have said, and then the topic of the Buddha. When the Blessed One has said this, the Venerable Shariputra, the Noble Avalokiteshwara, the whole gathering in the world of his gods, women, and they got spirits, their hearts full of joy, praise the words of the Blessed One. So in the morning, the Lord has Oh, if it's if you get hot and you're thirsty, you can get a water, right? Wow. And there's a water in the corner, so you can get some water if you're thirsty. Mm -hmm. Now today is uh, our Thursday class on the way of the Bodhisattva, and when that is the topic, it's it, it's fitting for it to be cool. Uh, when the topic is Bodhicitta, it ought to be cool. However, the wisdom has ignited, and so it's hot for us. <laughs> <laughs> Nipal so, the way of the Bodhisattva, uh, the present topic, uh, is involved in, in the uh, very mantra that I've recited, Tadiyata uh, Omgate Gati Paragati Parasam Gati Bodhisattva, which is go this way. This is the way. This is showing the way. 
Uh, and this is exactly what is uh, occurring now as, as we uh, teach and, and study the way of the Bodhisattva. It is the, the path of the Bodhisattva, the conduct of the Bodhisattva, and this is our, our topic and our objective. Now, <clears throat> anything that would be a hindrance uh, to progression is uh, eliminated by the wisdom realizing emptiness and the ability to traverse this uh, path that we are studying uh, is made possible by the wisdom uh, realizing emptiness. And we are training in the path now and in the means for traversing the path. To the far side, to the far side, side of the, the, the vast ocean, which is the vast ocean of the of suffering and samsara. So travel to the far side. And if we do train, in fact, in the way of the Bodhisattva, then there is an arrival on, on the far side. And as I said earlier in, in past classes, uh, as our topic is uh, the mind of enlightenment or bodhicitta, bodhicitta is of two kinds, uh, bodhicitta in aspiration and bodhicitta in engaged form. And when uh, the mind commits itself to engaging in, in the sublime practice of bodhicitta, uh, says, I will do this and accepts that as, as the mind's commitment, this is uh, bodhicitta in aspiration, but then when engagement occurs, when when activities uh, conform to the commitment and are active, then this is active bodhicitta. The benefits ensuing from bodhicitta in aspiration and bodhicitta in action or active bodhicitta uh, have been described and we find ourselves now uh, concluding the description of the benefits of, of uh, engaged bodhicitta or active bodhicitta. <clears throat> and this section has uh, two, two parts, the appropriateness or the fittingness that there be benefits uh, following from bodhicitta in, in its engaged form and a section for eliminating doubts. Uh, we resume the text here, uh, verse 29, but those who fill with bliss all beings destitute of joy, who cut all pain and suffering away from those weighted down with misery, who drive away the darkness of their ignorance, what virtue could be matched with theirs? Dungi, 
But those who fill with bliss all beings destitute of joy, these beings destitute of joy are those who haven't had the opportunity to listen to the profound benefits of bodhicitta and contemplate those benefits, contemplate the mind of enlightenment because they have been born uh, in the lower realms, in the hell realm, realms. And of course, there they have, no, they have no opportunity. They have no favorable opportunity. They have no satisfaction. Uh, <clears throat> and naturally so, as it is a hell realm. But even so, if some other uh, sentient beings are born into fortunate realms. But even in that case, if they're born as human beings, but they, they lack adequate faculties, or they are born in a region where the Dharma hasn't spread, or in, in the region where they live, there is no freedom uh, to practice. Uh, in those cases, those individuals still are the, the destitute named here. And so there are myriad forms of suffering. And if one is born into a lower realm, in the hell realm, then there are the three forms of suffering uh, necessar necessarily all uh, searingly experienced there. Uh, there's birth, and then there's aging, and there's death. And in all the myriad forms of suffering, if it isn't this form of suffering they're experiencing, then they're necessarily suffering another. <clears throat> and so they are described here as beings destitute, destitute of joy. So for all of those, for all of those destitute of joy, uh, with no opportunity to contemplate bodhicitta, without such an opportunity to, to contemplate bodhicitta, they will necessarily remain destitute, for there is no other uh, alternative. <laughs> But those who fill with bliss all beings destitute of joy, who cut all pain and suffering away from those weighted down with misery. Here we have presently, we have uh, the, the means available to us, each one of us to establish the causes for satisfaction, establish and, and entirely remove the causes for uh, discontents and dissatisfaction. We have these. And uh, it isn't, as described here, who fill with, but those who fill with bliss, that is, Filling with bliss is to provide every form of satisfaction, to quench every form of, of, of need and, and desire uh, to, to grant and, and satisfy entirely. And individuals do this, those who fill with bliss, uh, those who, who are destitute of joy. And what does this bodhicitta does this? Bodhicitta's cause does this. Uh, and bodhicitta's cause, one of uh, the causes is, is love. It is love that is being that is being uh, presented and described here. That is for the well-being of all sentient beings. I will establish sentient beings in contentment. I will do this. And so here, this verse is is indicating uh, the cause of bodhicitta, love. <laughs> Said 
这个人家的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他的话,他
这个就是他的目的,你摸过我,你摸这样,找到他,你摸过我,你摸这样,找到他,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我,你摸过我
the removal of dissatisfaction, the establishment of all forms of satisfaction, they are caused by bodhicitta. This ability to eliminate uh, discontents, to establish uh, uh, lasting satisfaction is, is provided to us uh, as a teacher would provide it to us. And so in this way, they are likened to uh, friends without compare. Uh, who is better uh, than the Bodhisattva? So maybe likened to a spiritual mentor. <clears throat> what merit is there similar to this? Uh, how is it that it is uh, most meritorious of all? It is because it is the, the unmistaken uh, means for uh, comprehension and practice of uh, that which is to be adopted as practice and that which is to be rejected as, as uh, ill forms of practice. Uh, and in this way, it is the, the, very, the very best in merit. Bodhicitta uh, is the most meritorious form and uh, it is unsurpassed. <laughs> Pain <laughs> These then are the benefits of bodhicitta, and one may comprehend those, those benefits of bodhicitta and comprehend that, that the means or the way in which they confer, bodhicitta confers uh, benefits uh, is fitting uh, and makes sense. Uh, and then this is followed by a presentation of how it is, a presentation in three parts of how it is an individual who has generated bodhicitta is worthy of praise. <clears throat> These three sections are uh, praise for the individual who it has developed bodhicitta. Uh, so this section, praise for individuals who, who have developed bodhicitta has three parts and they are, uh, though they are deserving of praise because though unsolicited, their great compassion com compels them to benevolence and kindness. That's the first of the three sections. And the second is they are deserving of praise, uh, especially when it is the case that when someone returns a favor, they are worthy of praise. It is all the more so the case that one, uh, that one uh, who brings about the com complete form of benefit and happiness for sentient beings uh, under no obligation. When this is the case, it is especially appropriate to find them praiseworthy. So when ordinary individuals who return a favor are praiseworthy, bodhisattvas are all the more praiseworthy. And the third section is having their praiseworthiness having become the unexcelled merit field. <laughs> The first section, 
the deservingness of praise of individuals with bodhicitta, deserving of praise because though unsolicited, their great compassion compels them to their kindness, uh, is described in verse 31. If someone who returns a favor is deserving of some praise, why need we speak of bodhisattvas, those who do good even unsolicited? Pamayana, if someone who returns a favor is deserving of some praise, uh, this is framed in two parts. Someone return, returns a favor and they're deserving of praise. So ordinarily, uh, whether it's our parents or relatives, and whether it's when we're children or in our times of need, our parents and our relatives, if they come to our aid and they help us, uh, whoever it is, parents, friends, they come to our aid, they help us in a time, time of need. And then as we were helped and assisted by them, we reflect on their kindness, acknowledge that they were helpful. And then it is natural, and this is just the ordinary, ordinary custom to return, to return the favor, to appreciate the, the uh, kindness and assistance shown by these parents, by our parents or relatives, whatever the case may be. And when a person who's been helped acknowledges that they've been helped and then helps in return or returns the, the favor in some way, then others observing this will say, this person is has a good character uh, and a person who behaves this way will appeal to people and they'll have respect for, for such a person. The verse continues. Why need we speak of bodhisattvas, those who do good, even unsolicited? So, so what the reason when it's the case that if someone who returns a favor is deserving of some, some praise, then it must be all the more true that bodhisattvas are deserving of our praise when they have no, they have no hope, they have no uh, expectation of 
anything in return from sentient beings, yet they, on an individual basis, each vulnerable sentient being, by each vulnerable sentient being, labor to establish that being in both their temporary well-being and their long-lasting well-being. They labor to eliminate the suffering both temporarily for those vulnerable sentient beings and to establish in contentment, lasting ultimate contentment, those sentient beings. And this is continuously their labor. And when this is the case and they have no hope or expectation of a repaid favor of any sort, why would, it, why would it not be the case that they are to be revered and respected and extolled for their extraordinary uh, generosity when they are uh, so distinguished this way? They are deserving of our praise, 100% certain that they are. <laughs> So with this reason given, uh, it becomes clear that, that respect, reverence, faith, uh, veneration of, of the bodhisattvas is, is most fitting. Uh, and it's most fitting then to listen to the qualities of bodhicitta and to practice uh, bodhicitta. The reason is clear because bodhicitta, giving rise to bodhisattvas, develops uh, and leads sentient beings to their lasting satisfaction and the complete elimination of their discontents. And so for that reason, Uh, the second, the second part, the praiseworthiness of bodhisattvas when, uh, when it is appropriate, given that when an ordinary individual benefits another in an in an ordinary minor way, that's worthy of praiseworthiness, or that's worthy of praise. When this is the ca case, it is all the more so the case that the individual who brings about the completed consummate benefit and happiness of sentient beings, such an individual is deserving of praise, all the more so. And so the verse that describes this is, begins, people praise, verse 32 on page 35, people praise as virtuous donors those who with contempt support a few with plain and ordinary food, a moment's gift that feeds for only half a day. What need is there to speak of those who long bestow on countless multitudes the peerless joy of blissful Buddhahood, the ultimate fulfillment of their hopes? This is the root verse Sejor was 
Sedan People praise as virtuous donors those who with contempt support a few with plain and ordinary food. A few. Uh, so first, this is the object or, or those receiving the, the generosity. And they're just a few. So they're a small group or uh, they're 10 people, 100 people, maybe 1,000 people. It's, it's the number of people receiving the, the charity. And it's just a few. And what is given uh, charitably is plain and ordinary food. So it's, it's food that is given. Uh, and then a moment's gift. This describes the amount of time. So it's just maybe a day's worth of food or food for a day, food for a month. This is the, the charitable giving. And with scorn, the people praise as virtuous those who with contempt support a few. So when, when giving this charitably, they do it reprovingly. Uh, so uh, with contempt. So when this is the, the occasion and, and the event of, of charitable giving, people will observe this and say, oh, this, this person is a, is a great philanthropist. This person is very generous. This person is very charitable. Now, they'll say this in such, a, in such uh, an instance. <laughs> Sanjeeva,
Continuing to verse 33, what need is there to speak of those who long bestow on countless multitudes the peerless joy of blissful Buddha? So here, the, the those receiving the, the generosity of, the, of these bodhisattvas are in number innumerable. Uh, <clears throat> So, so again, in verse 32, uh, this instance of charity is, is an instance of charity shown to a few, just a few. Uh, the food that which is given is, is nothing uh, to speak of, and it is for a day or a month, a short time. And it is giving, re given reprovingly or contemptuously. Uh, and, and this is the instance of charity, and it's appropriate enough to, to appreciate and approve of this, this form of, of generosity even. So if this is the case, then, then understand that when the object of the generosity of bodhisattvas are countless multitudes, that is their numbers are innumerable, they are boundless, and this is the object receiving the generosity. And when it's long bestowed, the time frame is eon upon eon until the achievement of Buddhahood for all sentient beings. This is the, the time frame. And the, that which is given is peerless joy, that is the supreme bliss of, of Buddhahood, the, the complete consummate satisfaction of all desires, the mind's every desire and wish, this is what is conferred. So when this is the instance of the Bodhisattva's generosity and the former was praiseworthy, all the more so this is beyond praiseworthy and must be celebrated. Why wouldn't it be celebrated? Why wouldn't it be revered? Why wouldn't it be uh, appreciated beyond bound? <laughs> あれ、ランゲセティゲノロンジュネ、ちょっと決まったスペースアメ、3 those receiving the generosity of bodhisattvas, those with those endowed with bodhicitta, are the innumerable, boundless, sentient beings all, one and all, without any exception. And this labor of the bodhisattvas continues unending, unend, unendingly until all achieve the omniscient state of Buddhahood. And that which is given, the, the generosity is of every conceivable form from the generosity of one's own body to one's every resource and on to the conferral of, of omniscient Buddhahood itself. The individual who is endowed with this mind and endowed with this mind gives great, great bliss in this way, continuously, uh, is an individual to be revered. And it is their mind, bodhicitta, that, must be, that we must strive for, must revere, must appreciate, and labor for. <clears throat> And then the third, third part, the praiseworthiness of bodhisattvas, 
<coughs> so they have become the unexcelled merit field. This section has its own three parts. And they are, the reason why is it is appropriate, or rather the reason why it is inappropriate to demean or denigrate the Bodhisattva. The reason why it is um, prudent to develop faith or assurance. And the, the fittingness of paying homage to Bodhisattvas and going to them for refuge. These are the three parts within the third part which is uh, having become a merit field, their worthiness of praise. Yeah. <laughs> That first, that first part in the third part, uh, the reason why it is inappropriate to denigrate uh, bodhisattvas in even the, the slightest way, how it is inappropriate to have any meanness uh, directed towards them, any, any jealousy, any reproving thoughts. This is described in verse 34. All those who harbor evil in their minds against such lords of generosity, the Buddha's heirs, will stay in hell, the mighty sage has said, for ages equal to the moments of their malice. Some <laughs> All those who harbor evil, evil in their minds against such lords of generosity. So whoever it is, whichever sentient being, whoever they may be, in their foolishness and in their, their want of merit, uh, <clears throat> sees a bodhisattva, this supreme uh, lord of generosity who confers the ultimate in bliss to sentient beings and sees such, such an individual, and then with disdain and maliciousness, is malicious, harbors a harmful intent. For, so, for the, the time that they had this malicious thought, they will, as the fully ripened result of that maliciousness, experience an equal number of eons in, in hell, in the hell realms as a result, equal number of eons, equal in number to the, the moments uh, that passed as they were malicious. Mm -hmm. 
但都得名了,还是能都得名了,你还是能接不接了,那是,让都得,让都修了,那么你也不出路的多的,让都修了,那么你也不出路的多的,都得接。但还是说,像这样的,像这样的,像这样的,像这样的,像这样的,像这样的
那那些丢我的了，多的了，多些嘛，那，特别多，特别，多些嘛，就不，查些清楚，多些多，查些多，你那看的是哪？看给弄个，千万你去点，习惯了，那那习惯，那来是苹果，全部，那没被查，有些人
a moment's anger shown to a bodhisattva, an individual with the mind of enlightenment, uh, <clears throat> further description of this will, will come, uh, especially in the context of uh, the benefits of patience, which will come later. Um, bodhicitta, the value of bodhicitta may be described in terms of the, the uh, false or the, the grave negativity of maliciousness shown toward individuals with bodhicitta. And bodhicitta's benefits may also be described. But here, uh, the, the gravity of a moment's spitefulness, a moment's disrespect shown toward a bodhisattva is described as the gravest of all, uh, the weightiest form of, of uh, misdeed. When there then are the there then is the gravity of a moment's disrespect, a moment's fit of anger toward a bodhisattva. If one recognizes that, recognizes the gravity of this, then one will naturally uh, avoid or or prevent uh, such maliciousness from arising uh, and directing itself towards a bodhisattva. But furthermore, if if uh, the gravity the gravity of this misdeed is understood, then then its opposite, uh, the value, or rather then then analogous analogously the value uh, of faith and and confidence in the bodhisattva. Uh, will develop. And verse 35 describes this, but joyous and devoted thoughts will yield abundant fruits in greater strengths. So as grave as the misdeed of a, a moment's anger toward a bodhisattva is, as grave as that is, the benefits and the merit uh, of devotion and respect for a bodhisattva are greater still than the gravity of a moment's anger toward a bodhisattva. Many multiples, many orders of magnitude greater are the benefits and the merit that comes from rejoicing and venerating a bodhisattva. <laughs> In the great treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment, uh, a, uh, an illustration is given where an individual blinds all sentient beings and puts all sentient beings in, in a prison. And as grave as this, as this meanness is, graver is the, is the meanness of a moment's uh, anger toward a bodhisattva. Now also in the great treatise on the stages of the path to enlightenment is the illustration of, of giving sight to those blinded and freeing from that prison all sentient beings. And as great as that charity and as great as that kindness would be, Three times greater is, is the greatness of a moment's deferential respect shown by folding one's hands in respect before a bodhisattva. <laughs> 
And like the the stupas uh, raised, demolished, burned. When these are repaired, if if in their place they were repair, repaired, and then a hundred thousand more were made, as great as that form of of charity and generosity would be, greater still would be, greater by three times would be a moment's uh, prostration and veneration of a bodhisattva. As for bodhisattvas, there's no telling who they are and where they are, and they may be among the the dogs and cats and all the animals, all the beings of the six realms. They may be found there. So then, uh, when uh, we we are momentarily frustrated and angered by another Scythian being, it might just be that that moment's that fit of anger uh, is directed toward a bodhisattva, and all of a sudden our roots of, of virtue have vanished. So then, if one can respect and venerate each sentient being that they encounter, then naturally all good qualities and benefits will flow from that as they may well be a bodhisattva. And so then each day uh, in our practice, if insofar as possible, we eliminate anger and spite and, and, and avoid criticizing uh, and other sentient beings, this form of daily practice becomes very important. Therefore, in, in our ordinary practice, avoiding condescension and hostility and, and berating others and unnecessarily unnecessary hostility, unnecessary, unnecessary uh, critiques. Uh, if one avoids all that as far as possible and in, is instead tolerant and relatively uh, silent, then one avoids that mishap of, of accidentally uh, in a fit of anger, uh, eliminating uh, their roots of their own roots of virtue and causing the the very sorts of misdeeds that lead to falls to the unfortunate realms so then this sort of practice in which we reduce our hostility and uh, 
contentiousness uh, is a very valuable form of practice. So then if ordinarily in, in practice, then we are respectful and considerate of others and, and with love and deference for others, even when harm ourselves tolerate the harm done to us and in so doing, find ourselves showing consideration for, for all sentient life, including the animals, the birds and the rest, then we may find that we have encountered at times a bodhisattva and all of a sudden then our merit uh, gains with, with no limit. And we have by encountering accidentally here a bodhisattva uh, found great merit through our tolerance. Now, if we consider bodhisattvas in this way and recognize that and recognize that ordinary forms of charity in which someone gives just a little bit, they give something paltry, they give someone their daily wages, something ordinary like this, and ordinary as it is, it's still worthy of appreciation. It's all the, it's all the more worthy of, of praise and veneration, the way in which a bodhisattva's generosity uh, occurs. And when we have someone come to the monastery and they make a small donation, uh, this form of philanthropy, this form of charity, as a donor, it's really, it's really trivial by comparison compared to the great charity, the great generosity of the bodhisattvas who, who confer upon sentient beings consummate joy and bliss and satisfaction. It is the bodhisattvas who are the supreme philanthropists and supreme in their generosity. They must be respected. They must be venerated. And when they are, our merit naturally uh, increases and naturally our grave misdeeds are purified. And we will stop here for today. <laughs> So if anything's not clear or you have doubts, then please ask questions. Could you repeat your closing statement? I uh, kind of had a minute black. Tani chuk chuk telea, and he chuk 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 Yangyar and Sumuchi, Chuk Chuk Delaya, Hallelujah.
<clears throat> so ordinarily, whether at work or in a monastery, someone may come with, with wages or they come making an offering. And when they do, then they will be recognized as a generous donor, a generous patron. And when they are, uh, as it's appropriate to recognize them in their generosity, it's all the more all the more appropriate, all the more fitting to see the bodhisattvas who, who, who give to us in this life satisfaction, but also to the consummate form of, of contentment that is omniscient Buddhahood. And when this is their generosity, they are in this way, the lords of generosity, the supreme philanthropists, the supreme, supreme among uh, donors, uh, the supreme uh, donor, the supreme. Uh, when when someone comes to the monastery uh the monastic college with some offering uh and they make a donation then we respect and appreciate them for being patrons now this is true but really the patron the real patrons the real lords of generosity may may come to us uh in an unrecognizable form in rags and we will mistake them as someone lowly and and have disdain for them and if this is our response to someone who comes and isn't well dressed and doesn't seem to be offering anything but in actuality they are continuously occupied with aspirational prayers that all sentient beings be separated from their suffering and that all sentient beings know their every their every last wish and contentment yet we have disdain for them then then we have we have mixed in in um, you know financial economic sort of uh, 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 concerns and and this has caused us to have disdain for someone who uh, comes as really the Lord of generosity. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I am going to go to the house. 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 I am going to
ती घेऊ ती सोसो धरा सोसो सेवन ग्रुप सोसो आणि मी कोणा घरा मी कसे फेस दिलो सुयेच Kibuchi, 
Put it down to the law. In it, you will see the children. What? Dandit. What? Dandit. Double two. And these four, these four forms of uh, ripening karma are fully ripened result, the environmental result, the, envir the, the result caused by a person, and the result concordant with the cause. <laughs> で、自分で言うと、人間そんな人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間、人間
Now, it's set apart or a section in the great treatise on the stages of the path of enlightenment has uh, deals with the four truths of the noble ones and uh, pratitit samupada uh, dependent origination and and the 12 links of dependent origination uh, in which the process of accumulation of karma and then its ripening is described in detail and there in in the first second and third uh, links of of dependent origination the process of accumulating karma takes place and then in the eighth ninth and tenth which are attachment grasping and then birth again the the karma that has been accumulated is uh, further promoted. Now it may be too in this in this uh, presentation too uh, the manner in which uh, minds non-virtuous minds cast forward the, the seed that will ripen. Uh, non-virtuous minds cast forward a seed that ripens. Virtuous minds cast forward the seed that ripens. But then the seed also too other seeds uh, remain latent. And, and may ripen, and in their own ripening, may change the course of that seed that is cast forward by the non-virtuous mind or the virtuous mind. And so uh, having listened to uh, presentations of, of emptiness as a form of latent, uh, as remaining latent in the continuum may, may ripen, and as it ripens, may redirect that, that course uh, determined by uh, a virtuous mind or a non-virtuous mind. So there, and there, there are uh, varieties of this sort of uh, oral instruction that comes from from various teachers. <laughs> no, we don't have a question. So, uh, I have a very simple question. You know, His Holiness is everybody treating him as a very his pure Bodhisattva. There's nobody doubt that. But, uh, you know, he also think he do a lot of, uh, you know, merit for the, for the human beings and also for the Tibetan people. You know, I just saw this book. This book comes from that. It's remember <coughs> the tennis of His Holiness uh, Dalai Lama. The tennis? It's, yeah, uh -huh. it's the writing by the Lama Dogo uh -huh. Right? Uh -huh. So, but you know, I heard a lot of uh, some His Holiness uh, teaching. Uh -huh. But uh, what's the difference between his teaching and the Christmas teaching? You know, I don't think that this. <laughs> he also gave teaching about this for the Sadawa way, right? Uh -huh. So the question because also, also give the same teaching you know uh -huh. and why his uh, his uh, contribution is so big for the world uh, what do you mean okay you know what i mean i guess yeah, yeah he made a great contribution for the world peace uh -huh. for everything uh -huh. and his most famous uh lama in the world right uh -huh. but what the reality what the real benefit he blessed for the world and then it's Salam Salatwa that you did in a dinner. Uh, go Rimbuche, go Rimbuche, Karsani, Mima, Mima, Junction Simba Yabadi, and Mimangi, and Killing Yori, and a go Rimbuche, uh, and Zebatin Lady, and a Sunny Karsani, and the Sangi Deva, and a nice and Tongi Yori, and a uh, 
Kanjis, Karitine, and a Hirachim would in the Chayana. And a Yorum Jigi, Zeba Chinleda, Kishikunju Tinzingi, Petty Nanta, Kikeva, Karigi. Now, for example, the put the Shakyamuni behind behind me. How how in the first case do we recognize and identify the Buddha Shakyamuni as uh, as significant? We may do so through two means: through the Dharma of Scripture and the Dharma of Realization. Through both of these, one may ascertain, one may discover the significance of the Buddha Shakyamuni's teachings and the Buddha, and of the Buddha Shakyamuni. And so it is by, by virtue of the Dharma itself that the significance of the individual is, is recognized. Because as it happens, based upon the Dharma, in one's own mind, valid cognitions, valid ideas arise having to do with effective elimination of, of pain and sorrow and establishment of contentment and satisfaction. And so our confidence comes then, confidence uh, comes from uh, the, the Dharma and the Dharma uh, is the basis then for the respect and recognition of the significance of the individual. And so we may discover develop this kind of confidence based upon the teaching of, of any uh, spiritual mentor who's teaching. Based upon what they say, we may discover through the Dharma that they're teaching the value and the significance of the person. So, so that's one part. Then the other part is, is that uh, <clears throat> also there are other characteristics of, of individuals, uh, their qualities that that are indicative of their significance, especially, for instance, their altruism uh, and their, their uh, occupation with the well-being of others and their disregard and indifference to their own ends. And when we see this in an individual, we are ravished away by, by this quality and in, in this characteristic ravished away by the quality of the person and recognize that they that they are or rather by ravishing away the minds of those who encounter them they gain fame and recognition uh, and they work and protect uh, sentient beings so both of these <laughs> Ah, 
수수비 생기 띵리 다 수수비 거정오리 뜸바 체마 이바 최 체마 이바 세디 수수비 다 대로성 망고 지금 김세 망고 사모탄 예절와 이는 어도 다 거지 대신 나타 대표에 대해 여발 때는 나 먼저 가르 가두고 가르 가두고 있나 장주비 쌤나 수수비 로성 제 앰무트 아니 고고 대대기 돌아 로성 체마 도 여발 이나 ま、ずかさだこちゃんじゅうせんばれせえ、こちゃんじゅうせんのどんちぎよだ。ちゃんじゅうせんばれ、やめちぎよれ。ちゃんじゅうせんもずゆえなめなこちゃんじゅうせん
environment, the world at large, faced with, with problems, that these be overcome and worldwide all know satisfaction and contentment. <clears throat> From my two from my collections, collections of vast space, space that I have amassed, from, from working with the effort of this project for a great length of time, may I become the chief, chief leading Buddha for all those whose mind is blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all my lives. May I find the best of the past and the complete teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by practicing. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness of mind from my all seeds. With the point of the path as I have discerned, may I uphold Buddha's teachings for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion, in whatever direction those precious teachings have not yet spread or once spread have declined, may I offer this treasure of happiness to aid all sentient beings. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted bounteous peace, and the Buddhist deeds be nourished for a long time by allowing the complete graduated path to enlightenment and a wondrous virtuous conduct with the Buddhists and their subjects. May all human and non-human beings have eliminated adversity and may make things conducive for practicing their lifetimes, never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path raised by the Buddhists. And whenever someone makes effort to rise in accordance with the tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, may he always be assisted by the mighty ones and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. <clears throat> I've ever collected for the benefit of the teachings and of sentient beings, 
and in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lothan Dharma to shine forever. In the land encircled by snow and mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful sinners and sinners and gamblers, please remain until psychic existence is ended. Just as the brave words of Sri and Samantha did not realize things as they are, all of so I can give all these merits in the best way that I may follow their perfect example. I dedicate all of these roots of virtue with the dedication raised as the best by the victorious thus gone ones of the three times, so that I might perform the noble Bodhisattva's deeds. May the supreme jewel of Bodhisattva that has not arisen or rise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Thank you.